One major internet surfboard is a program called Gopher. It's called that either because it will go for files on the net, or maybe because it was created at the University of Minnesota where the mascot just happens to be a rodent known as the Golden Gopher. It's easy to reach Gopher on most internet providers. You simply click on Gopher like this, or if you have a text-based screen, you want to type it and press enter, and a menu comes up. Now, Gopher is called a menu-based program because it always shows you a list of the items that you can possibly choose from. Okay, let's travel through Gopher space to Oxford University. Gopher space is the total of all the information you can get by using Gopher. And since Gopher is a very popular service, Gopher space is a huge and expanding part of the Internet. Anyway, at Oxford University in England, they have a magnificent library. Now they're making some of the world's great books even more available through a really cool Gopher site. They've stored many of the great works of literature in a computer. They have the writings of Shakespeare, H.G. Wells, Mark Twain, on and on. So let's go there, go to the Oxford libraries, some bibliographic information, the catalog of electronic texts, and let's look at the actual catalog. Now let's choose something that's not too large, like say, The Charge of the Light Brigade by Tennyson. I click on it here, and in a few seconds it should pop up on the screen where I can read it directly. If I don't want to read it on the screen, I can copy it to my own computer. And here it is, half a league, half a league, half a league onward. I'm interested in traveling to Wales, so I'm going to see what I can learn about that part of Great Britain by using Gopher. Now, when using Gopher, it's likely you'll get another menu, which will lead to another menu, which will lead to another menu, and so on, until maybe, just maybe, you'll actually reach what you're looking for. Sometimes you may never reach what you're looking for, but along the way, you can find several useful things you never would have thought to look for, like this. Here we have the A to Z of public houses in the Aberystwyth area. We have a restaurant guide. We have a guide to recommended local real ale pubs. You know, if we're going to go to Wales, this sounds like some pretty useful information. The town was born in the 13th century when they built the castle. The English built the castle. And then the railways arrived in the 1850s and the college itself started in the 1870s. We're on the prong in Aberystwyth on rather a windy day. The town's got about 10,000 people in it, and then students in term time and holidaymakers in the summer. Jeremy Perkins works at the University of Wales in Aberystwyth. He's also a member of the Campaign for Real Ale. Real ale is easy to find around here if you know where to look. Jeremy does, and he's shared that information on the internet. We are an educational establishment, so the main reason for having an information service here has to be to um, provide information to staff and students about the university. But it's always been in, in my mind that a function of a university is to encourage as many students as possible to actually use computing during their time here. And so I've always taken the approach that to have a bit of fun on an information service is going to pull more people in and hopefully after they've had a smile they're actually going to start using it for serious things. Of course Jeremy thinks real ale is a serious matter too. I mean really it's meant one has to visit every pub in the area over time to, to check them out, to see what the landlord's like, to see how comfortable they are, to see how he keeps his beer which is obviously key importance and, and what range he's got. I mean there's an enormous range of real ale available in Britain and uh, People like to have a change every now and again, so all that has to really be uh, checked out. You want one for yourself? Seriously, yeah? Yeah, sure. A few years ago, the big brewers decided that real ale, like, like this marvellous pint, was too much trouble, and they started to market what they call keg beer, which was pasteurised dead beer in kegs, served by carbon dioxide cylinder. But that's when the campaign for real ale was formed, and bit by bit, Consumers have said, no, that, that's not good enough. That, that really is rotten old beer. And proper beer has, has come back into the pubs. And uh, that's one of the reasons I started this list. So if you're looking for vital information like the best ale or restaurants in an area, Gopher is usually the fastest and easiest way to find it. And one of the most fun. 
Gopher also lets you display files, copy them to your own computer, or mail them to yourself. The biggest problem of Gopher is that since it's been so successful, people have created many, many menus. So you can get a bit lost sometimes when you're looking around. But some clever computer guys came up with another way to search Gopher space, a program called Veronica. Why is it called Veronica? Well, someone once claimed that it stood for very easy, rodent-oriented, net-wide index to computer archives. But I think they were just probably reading too many comic books. Veronica works with that rodent, Gopher. And with Veronica, you can conduct a word search of menu titles or file titles found in Gopher space. Let's say we wanted to check out what information is available on a medical problem, like, say, back pain. You see, I'm clicking here. I'm going to connect here to a university in Germany. And I've searched for back and pain and pressing OK. And what we're seeing here is a listing of articles and messages relating to back pain. So you can see that Veronica will save you a lot of time in Gopher Space. Veronica lets you search all of Gopher Space. Her friend Jughead lets you conduct the same sort of search but lets you restrict your search to one particular part of Gopher Space. And if you like Veronica or Jughead, you'll really like Archie, another way to find stuff on the net.